The Ashes are here for the taking today in Perth and a crack in the wake a pitch looms as the key after a Mitchell Stark wonder ball edged Australia closer to regaining the sport's most treasured prize on Sunday. Steve Smith's men enter the fifth day of the third test within touching distance of taking an unassailable 3-0 series lead and reclaiming the Anglo-Australian bragging rights they surrendered with defeat on the last Ashes tour of England in 2015. Read more from Chris Barrett here. On the third day of batting, Steve Smith did rise again. Nor did Marsh the Sun. But others kept their powerful faith, and Australia tumbled onwards towards victory and reclamation of the Ashes. As the day unfolded, the change of names gave no protection to the innocence of England. This turn of events was always probable. Doubtlessly, there is a stat for how often one day's heroic and unbeaten century maker adds few or none the next day indeed falls in the first over. Steve Waugh at the SCG in 2003 is the most famous of many. It is Test Cricket's New Day Syndrome. No two days are alike, the page always turns. It is what sets the game apart, you always have to come back. Because of this quirk, the opuses of Smith and Marsh were beheld by one crowd and saluted by another. Read Greg Baum's rap of day four here. Nathan Lyon's controversial pre-series sledge about ending careers is proving prescient with Alastair Cook headlining the list of England players holding on for test survival. The visitors' cultural issues will feature prominently in the English board's Ashes post-mortem with coach Trevor Bayliss having already warned that players' futures are at stake. A match that Cook described as the biggest game of our lives has turned into a nightmare for the visitors, who need a miracle, or a deluge to avoid surrendering the urn on Monday. Read more from Andrew W. here. When yet another Australian shot skated to the Waker boundary during the weekend's play, English fieldsmen responded with hearty hand clapping. This was merely the illusion of an outbreak of sportsmanship. The Englishmen were, in the current fashion, not applauding the batsman but encouraging the bowler. That this condolence was pouring out for Stuart Broad, 112 test matches, 393 wickets, and James Anderson, 132 test matches, 518 wickets, only compounded the insults the two great bowlers were taking from the freewheeling Australian bats. These were not hard-striving new boys needing a pep-up. This was Anderson and Broad, Broad and Anderson. One tour too far. Images came to mind, Jeff Thompson in 1985, Mitchell Johnson in 2015, Andrew Flintoff in 2006-07. Even the best fast bowlers go on that long, long trip once too often. Read more from Malcolm Knox here.